In this video, we're going to add multiplayer to our game. So what I'm going to use is Photon Pawn 2. So let's go and find it in the Asset Store and open in Unity. And there it is. I'll import it and we get the Pawn Wizard. If you didn't get this window, you can go to Window and right here under Photon Unity Networks, click on the Pawn Wizard and you're going to get this window. So now I'm going to go to the dashboard and create a new app. I'm using Pawn and I'll name it Among Them. Create. Copy the app ID that you can find right here and let's put it inside here. Click set up project and you can check, make sure that the real ID is in here. So we're done with Photon configuration and now we can add multiplayer functionality to our game. Now a little bit about the game that I'm using here in case you haven't seen other videos on this game. So this game is part of a tutorial series that I'm making. In this tutorial series, the idea is to create a game like Among Us. And in this series, I want to cover a lot of those mechanics from Among Us. Now, the series is both in visual scripting using Bolt and C Sharp. So if you're interested to see other videos from this series, there is links to the playlist in the description. But for this video, you're not required to watch the previous videos to understand what's going on here, because I'm going to be focusing on just the multiplayer part of it and you can follow along implementing on the project that you're working on. In this video, I'm going to be using Bolt to set up this logic. If you're looking for the C Sharp version, there's a link in the description. You can check that out. So to use Photon with Bolt, we actually need to do some configuration in Bolt. So let's go to Bolt and go to Unity Option Wizard. In here at the very bottom, let's add some assembly options. So the ones that we'll need to add is Photon Unity Networking, Photon Real Time, and to control our Cinemachine camera, we'll also add Cinemachine. Click Next. And for type options, we'll add photon network and room options. That's the ones that we're going to use in this video. We'll probably have to add more in later videos. Click generate and that should generate the units that we can use in Bolt to control photon. So now that Bolt is configured for photon, we can start adding the photon logic. For that, I'll add a new game object. I'll call it photon bolt because I already have photon C sharp. That one is disabled. So the C sharp script is not running. We can go and add a component. We'll add a flow machine and let's actually make it embedded. Now there is one script that we need to create to connect Photon to Bolt so that the Photon callbacks can be triggered as a custom event in Bolt. But I went ahead and created that file. So there should be a GitHub link in the description. It's a small file, so you can go through the link. And one trick that you can do is there's an raw option right here. And in Chrome, if you hold down Alt key on the keyboard, and click on raw, it's actually gonna download that file for you. So you can just then drag it into Unity. So once the file is in, we can add it to our component. And this script is just gonna convert two callbacks on connected to master and on join to room. And I use the custom event names exactly as the methods. So on connected to master and on join room are the custom events that we're gonna create in Bolt. So back to our Bolt. The Photon setup is going to be similar to what I used in the 2D Tank multiplayer tutorial. So if you saw that, this will be very familiar to you. But there are some differences between the games. So you will see some changes that I'll add. So the first thing on start, what I'm going to do is connect using settings. And this will connect to Photon servers using the settings that we have configured for Photon. I'm not going to use the update event, so we can remove that. And after we successfully connect to the network, Photon is going to fire the callback on connected to master. And for that, we'll create a custom event. And the event name is on connected to master. Once we're connected to master, we'll do a very basic setup. And for that, we're just going to do a join or create room. For room name, I'll just call it room one. And now we need to create the room options. So we can use the room option unit to create a room. And in this room option, we're going to set the max player to 10. That's the limit that we're going to put for the size of the room. After we create the room options, we can connect the flow to join or create room. And I'll go and enable chainable option here and connect the room options to room options here. For the type lobby, I'll connect it to null and same thing for expected users. So this should get us connected to a room. And now we can add another custom event on join room. That's the callback that Photon is going to fire once we successfully join a room. When the player connects to room, I want to create a character. And for that, I'm going to use Photon Network Instantiate. You have to use Photon Network Instantiate so that the character will be created in everyone's scene that is inside the room. The way that Photon Instantiate works is you need to pass in the prefab name, but the prefab needs to be in the resources folder. We'll move the character in the resources folder in a little bit. 
but right now let's put in our prefab's name and my prefab name is character one bolt position i'll leave it at zero and for rotation i'm gonna pass in quaternion literal also one more thing that i need to do is for the date pass in no because that field is optional after I create the character, I need to connect the camera to follow that character. So I'll have to change some settings in my Cinemachine virtual camera. And the setting that I wanna change is the follow setting. So I can pull up this unit. For the transform, I can pass in the game object that we just created. And for the camera, we actually need to go and find it. And the name of the virtual camera is CMV Cam one so I'll just pass that in. And that should be it for the basic configuration of Photon that we're gonna use in this video. But before we try it out, we need to make some changes on our character prefab. So first, let's remove the character from the scene because we're gonna be instantiated once someone joins the room. The character prefab, like I said, needs to be in the resources folder. I already have the resources folder created over here. So I'm just gonna move the character in that folder. And now I have to do some configuration on the character. So one thing that I want to do for this game is to disable collision between characters so that the players won't collide with each other. And for that, I'm going to switch the layer from default to player. And I already have a player layer. If you don't have that, you can go add layer and just name one of them to player. Once you created that player layer, to disable the collision between player and player, what you need to do is go to project settings and then go under physics 2D because I'm using 2D physics in this game. And at the very bottom, you have the layer collision matrix. And if you want to disable collision between certain layers, you can just find that box and uncheck it. And I have it unchecked already, player and player. So there isn't gonna be any collisions between player and player. So now that that is set, we need to add the logic for Photon to keep track of our character. So the first thing that we'll need to add is Photon View. The Photon View is responsible to keep track who owns this game object, and also you can connect observers to it. Now there's different types of observers that you can add. For my character, I'm using Rigid Body to control the character, and you can use Rigid Body 2D to synchronize the movement of the player on the network. But for this game, I'm not gonna use the Rigid Body 2D. Instead, I'm gonna just use the Transform View. And this gives you options what you want to synchronize. So I want to synchronize the position. I'll leave rotation. I don't really use it, but I'll just leave it in case I'll decide to use it. In my game, I also use scale to flip the character based on the direction that the character is moving. So I'll turn on scale. Also, my character has some animation and I want to keep track of that too. So for that, I can add another component. And the one that I'm looking for is photon animator view. So let's add that in. And in here where it says synchronize parameters, I want to switch it from disable to continuous because I use the speed parameter to switch the state of the animation. So that's the photon components that we need to add so that photon can synchronize the movement and the behavior of our character on the network. Now, the last thing that we need to add is to make sure that we control only our character and that we disable the controls from the other characters. So let's click added graph for our character movement. And all of my movement logic is in update event. And in here, what I wanna do is check if the character is owned by me. If it is, then I will allow the character to be controlled by the keyboard input. If it's not, I'll just do nothing. So for that, Photon View has a unit, is mine. And this unit returns true or false. If the unit is mine, it's gonna be true. So we can use branch and bolt to decide if we want to continue the logic or not. So we can connect that and that should be it. We can click play and make sure that the character spawns. And there we go, here's our character, we can control him. Now we can go into build settings and click build and run to test if it's gonna work correctly on the network. So here is our build version and it seems like our character got created, we can control it. Let's also play it in Unity. And there we go, you can see that a second player joined. So the movement is synchronized and the animation is synchronized. Our players don't collide with each other and we can move both of them at the same time. So there we go. Now we got basic multiplayer functionality using Photon and Bolt to our game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.